Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing okay. Um, I only took one week off, like one singular week, and I already feel a bit awkward trying to get back into it, so if I sound that way, just bear with me please. Um, for those of you who are regular viewers, this might not be the file of facts you were expecting to see. <laughs> um, if you want to guess why I swapped from A5 to personal in the comments before you watch the video, you could do that. That might be a fun game for us regular people. Um, if you're not a regular viewer, that's okay. I'm just going to talk about how I'm using this personal size file of facts straight away. I'm not going to preamble too much. Um, and if you're regular, you can stay to the end <laughs> um, and hear me justify this new experiment. Um, all I do is justify my planner choices on this channel. <laughs> um, this is the personal size file of facts. I've only been using it for a week. But I have been using Filofax in general for a month-ish, just over a month maybe. Um, and I've been making my own inserts for just over a month. So all that's really changed between the A5 book that regular viewers have been seeing and this personal size is that I shrunk the pages down to fit. <laughs> um, otherwise everything else is still the same, so it's not a huge change. Um, this is the Norfolk personal planner by Filofax. Um, that's what the cover is called. It's nice. I like it. It's like a pebbled leather. It has a zip pocket that I'm not using at the moment. Um, it has card slots in the back. It's kind of cute. It has a closure pen loop, which I think is kind of awkwardly placed, but that might be on me. Um, and 30 millimeter rings. <laughs> um, so the reason why I say the pen loop might be awkwardly placed, but it's probably just my fault, is because the pages I'm making, the inserts I'm making, are not actually personal sized. That's why the book might look a bit out of proportion at first glance. It might look like it's A6 or something. It's not. It's personal. <laughs> um, I'm making my pages bigger than they should be because I don't like how narrow the personal size pages are. Um, I, I don't really enjoy a very narrow book. I think I found that out when I was using the Hobonichi Weeks, potentially. Um, but also, whenever I've tried to use Traveller Company systems in the past, I also don't get on with how narrow the pages are, even though they're quite big. I just don't like that sort of awkward narrowness. <laughs> I'm not a fan. Um, so I am using, I think they're called the Franklin Covey Compact size pages. I learnt this trick from Peanuts Planner Co on Instagram. I'll put her picture. Um, I think she does this, but they fit better in other Filofax covers. I chose to get the Norfolk cover because it looks really soft and I quite like it. Um, the colour is Espresso, which is a really dark brown and it's kind of cute. I put my little charms on the zip, which is nice. Um, and I like that the rings are 30 millimetres. The problem <laughs> with the rings being 30 millimetres is that my pages stick out quite far. Um, so I'll show you at the end, but there is some overhang, and I think that's also why my pen loop is, like, jeopardised. <laughs> um, so what I normally do when I close the book is tuck my pen, like, under my pages, which is fine now, but when it gets fuller, it might be more of a problem, I guess, potentially. Um, but I also really like having as much room as physically possible on the rings, so I didn't really want to get a smaller size ring or compromise on the style of cover, because I like this one. Um, so this is what I have, and this is what I'm sticking it out with for the rest of the year. I know I said that about the A5, but we'll talk about that at the end. <laughs> um, I really like it so far, to be honest with you. I was nervous about the overhang, but it's not too bad. It's like a centimetre at most, like at its absolute worst. Um, but otherwise I'm having a really good time. So those are my like specs, <laughs> I guess. Um, hopefully that makes sense. This zip pouch is just a Filofax zip pouch. I don't love it, to be honest with you, but I do like it as a sort of like page protector. Um, that's kind of why I keep it in the front, even though it's empty. I always find with these like gummy style Filofax pouches, they're never punched properly, so they're quite tight on the rings and then it's really awkward to maneuver over. Um, so maybe they'll loosen up with time, but not yet. <laughs> um, but it's a good page protector in my opinion, so there we go. Um, I'll go chrono chronologically through the book, um, so I'll start from the top and then we'll just end at the bottom and then I'll show you how full it is and how it overhangs, that kind of thing. And then I will talk about why I'm using this size. <laughs> um, so the first page, I made this like 
it's not really a divider it's like a separator i guess it's like a little cover out of vellum paper i bought these sheets on amazon and then i cut it to size using a cutting mat <laughs> um i put my little gold number stickers on it i think i got these ones from ryman's here in the uk um they look like this they look like this um i think they're from ryman's underneath i have a it's a photocopy not a scan a photocopy of my one of my tarot cards um, I'll put the artist for the cards on the screen, they're not my own, um, but I photocopied that as a reminder. Um, I won't talk about what they mean, maybe if people know it'll be cool for them, but I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about stuff like that. So anyway, I put it here as a reminder, but also as kind of like a nice front cover, I think it's kind of cute. Um, it's just nice to have something there so that you don't immediately just jump into like the boring stuff. Um, because I've spent the last week in this side sort of experimenting with the pages and the layouts and stuff, um, I've set it all up to start the first week of July, <laughs> um, which is like tomorrow is the first day of July, I think. Um, so a lot of this beginning stuff is quite empty, um, but it's kind of tactical, <laughs> if that makes sense. So I made these pages, these sort of like future log style pages, um, to, to work as a future log, I guess, for making notes about appointments and stuff. Alternatively, I might use it as a gratitude log. I've been struggling with my health recently, which in turn is impacting my mental health. I've been having some trouble with memory fog and haziness, memory fog, brain fog and memory. <laughs> so I've been hazy. Um, so I might also just use it to make notes about what I've done each day. Um, I used to do that when I was in uni and I found it was quite a big help when I was trying to go back and work out which days I did certain things. Um, I do have planning pages so I could also reference those but I think sometimes it's nice to just have like a more basic overview sort of like with a really quick summary rather than like my to-do list. Um, or alternatively it could be a gratitude log just to help me sort of remember what I'm grateful for and like of good things while I'm struggling. <laughs> Um, so I've deliberately left the headings and stuff quite vague to allow for that, um, so I have the option to decide what I want it to be. Um, although it starts tomorrow so I don't have too much time left to decide, um, but that's how I did it. Um, I think it's pretty cute. On the back of here I have a sleep log. Um, I put this here just because I had a blank page and I was like, oh, what could I put on the blank page that could go so early in the book but goes next to the month of July um, and then I was thinking about how I needed to make a sleep log. Um, I got referred to the sleep clinic, <laughs> um, that's part of the health stuff I was talking about so this kind of stuff now is really important for me personally. Um, so I thought because, okay so how I make my pages, maybe that will make more sense, is I print them two, side by side and then I fold them in half and glue them and then I trim the edges off and hole punch them. So that's why when I paginate <laughs> in Procreate, I have to think about which ones are going to be printed on the back of the other one. Um, and that's why, because there was a blank space, I had to think like, oh, what could I put there before I print it? Hopefully that makes sense. I maybe should have explained that beforehand. Um, so I put a sleep log here. It's just kind of tracking like not how many hours because I have really poor sleep. Um, there's no point in me tracking the hours I sleep. I have so much frequent waking and I spend so much time like not asleep or awake but somewhere in between that it's really not worth trying to keep track of specific lengths of time or specific bouts of sleep like it's just such a waste of time for me personally so instead what i'm doing is monitoring the general quality of my sleep so there's a sad face <laughs> for what i usually have and then there's like a medium face and a happy face um i'm expecting a lot of the the last two <laughs> i'm not really anticipating a lot of happy faces I then have a section for notes so I can talk about like napping and stuff and sleep attacks, that kind of thing. And then I have another happy sad face scale <laughs> on the other side of the page for everyday sleepiness, that's what EDS stands for. Um, as I say, I got referred to the sleep clinic. I don't really want to elaborate on it now until I know what's going on and stuff and until I progress through the investigation, I guess, but these are the things I'm now having to explore. Um, following on from that, I have the month of July. Um, this is my monthly overview. I don't need like loads of room. I quite like having a small calendar. I'm using the, this, the, how do you call them? The dot markers. They're a really famous brand and I can't remember what they are and I didn't bring them upstairs. 
um, they're, they're like, they're called like zig dot pens or something like that, um, hopefully I can find the link and put it in the description. So I'm using those to mark dates on the calendar and then I'm just writing down what the dates are underneath. Um, over here I put don't forget to rest when you can, um, because I'm not okay. <laughs> um, but also because this was not centered, I couldn't get it to center on the page. So I wanted something to balance it out visually and then I thought, oh, that would be kind of nice. And now I'm like weirdly attached to it. Like now I'm like, oh, that's so nice. Um, so just something I added that I'm actually a weirdly big fan of now. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think I need much more room than this for a month. If I had more detail to do, I'd probably make like a month on two pages maybe. Um, but for now, this works absolutely fine for me. Um, I really just need the list more than anything else, so... Following on from that, we go straight into my weekly pages. Um, I usually plan like vertically on weeks, like in the Hobonichi Cousin, but because I'm trying to rest and cut back on my to-do list <laughs> and stuff like that, trying to take it easy basically, just prioritizing resting, I'm currently planning a week on a page with really small boxes. They're not really, really small, they're just a little smaller than I'm used to, um, in an effort to restrict what I can plan to do in a day. I think it's working. Um, I, I think I think it's mostly working. <laughs> um, it's super simple. I have this um, box on the side, I guess, for my check boxes. I like to have that. I think it's nice to have a designated space for those. It just makes things look a bit neater, I guess. Um, also, I'm a really big fan of a margin, <laughs> so there's always that as well. Um, I like to have the week number just so I can see how we're progressing through the year. I just have always kind of enjoyed that, so I've updated it for every every week. Um, not a lot else. I always try to schedule rest as like a very like definitive item in my list. Um, but now that I have less room, I'm not really writing it as much as I was previously, which is interesting. <laughs> it's kind of like a catch. Um, yeah, not too much else to say about that, it's just very simple. This one, um, this little half page, I use as an extra space to write other tasks down. So these are the things I need to do in a day, and this is my priority box. But then sometimes you have smaller things to do that you just need to like, I don't know, order flea tablets for your dog or something really silly like that. And like, you don't really need to make that like a to-do list item. That doesn't have to be like one of like the items you do that day, but it's just like a weird side task. Um, so I normally have this task master list so that I have more room to write that stuff down. It also gives me space to write things down that don't necessarily have to happen on a particular day, but need to get done at some point. Um, so it can just be like a really long general to-do list. There's nothing on it this week <laughs> because when I sat down to film this video, I realized I forgot to print them for this size book. I've been using them really religiously in my A5 file of facts, and then I just completely forgot to move it over. Um, so I really quickly made those up. <laughs> um, on the back I have additional notes, which is nice because sometimes at the end of the day I like to make a little note about my day. When I'm vertically planning and it's like a column per day, it's a lot easier because you have more room. Um, and I found that when I moved into these smaller boxes, I did kind of miss that, so I added the additional notes on the back of the task master list because I never have more than like 30 tasks in my week, um, I hope. <laughs> um, so it's it's nice to have on the back and then there's no wasted space. Um, the only place that I have wasted space right now is on the back of my tarot card scan. Um, because of how I photocopied them, rather than printing them, I didn't really have the option to put something on the back. Um, I'm not very technically... I'm not very good technically, <laughs> so I wasn't sure how to go about doing that so I could put something on the reverse. Um, I might stick some something there. I might just put like, I don't know, some sticky notes maybe. That could be nice actually, that could be really smart. I might do that. <laughs> um, just as like something to move around. Um, but on the back of my tarot cards, and I have a couple more tarot cards later, that, that's the only empty space I have right now. So I am trying to be like really space efficient, especially because I'm printing it all at home. Um, and it's really fun because it really makes me think about how I want to lay things out, like with my sleep log on the back of my future log. Um, like it, I really had to sit down for a few minutes and think like, okay, what could I put on the back? I can't print it empty. Like it can't have a blank page, like that's not good. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's really fun to like work out as I go along, I guess. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Um, the weekly tracking log, um, everything, I just call everything logs, <laughs> I don't know why. My weekly tracking page, I made this up for my A5 and then I just shrunk everything to fit for this one. 
Um, I'm tracking fatigue and energy levels. <laughs> um, I'm tracking headache slash mental health, which is really just more headache stuff than mental health stuff. Um, the only real mental health thing I get is like foggy and irritable <laughs> um, due to like the chronic lack of sleep, but I'm tracking like nosebleeds and migraines. Um, and then daily habits, which I've been tracking since the dawn of time. It's just engaging with a special interest, drinking one bottle of water, like at least doing a little work because sometimes it's too much to ask to do a lot of work. Um, take migraine meds and then practicing Welsh on Duolingo. So these are the things I do every day. And then these are just health things that I vaguely want an idea of in the week. Um, sometimes it's good because sometimes when I go to tick it all off, I haven't actually sat down to think about how I'm feeling that day until I do this. And then actually sitting down and thinking about it, I'm like, oh, that's why you feel so bad. Like maybe you should reevaluate your plan for the day kind of thing. Um, so it's really nice as a reference, but it's also nice to just have that reminder during the day or like at the end of the day. Like sometimes when I take off irritable, I'm like, oh, I was an asshole all day. <laughs> I have some apologies to make to the people I live with, that kind of thing. Um, it can just be nice to have those kinds of reminders, I guess. Um, I have a different CD for each week because I really like CDs. <laughs> um, if you follow me, you know that. Um, I'm big into CDs. It's nice to have a different CD every week. I have an inhaler because I'm asthmatic and I always forget to take my inhaler <laughs> um, and then some painkillers too. Just reminders, I guess. Um, a little CD to cheer me up and then also the reminders to take my inhaler. <laughs> um, so on that first week I have Nirvana and then I have Gorillaz um, and then I have My Chemical Romance. And then uh, the New Moon soundtrack just because that cracks me up when I get midway through the month and I'm tired. And then I turn the page and I see the New Moon soundtrack, it just makes me giggle every time. So that's a tactical way of planning. Um, and then a Quarton CD as well. So that's five weeks, I think, which I think is usually the maximum number of weeks we have. So I rotate those CDs every week, every month. <laughs> um, so it's just fun. It's I'd never expected to enjoy making my own pages so much. Like I, for the longest time, I had never even considered making my own pages, which on reflection as an illustrator and someone who has been really into planning and stuff for so much of my life, it feels so silly to not have considered it sooner. But it's so fun to make something so personal for myself, like <laughs> jokes included. Like it's just like, it's, it's a real joy. <laughs> um, so it's really keeping me going at the moment, to be honest with you. It's it's really nice. Um, that is, uh, and then I have August sleep log. That is the extent of my planning. What would happen after these is that the August will start, <laughs> the month will end. So then I'll print this one out again with the same loop of pages. I've like cracked the pagination, <laughs> so they should just like seamlessly carry across from now on. So I can just pop August in when I'm ready. Um, after that ends, I have the Four of Cups. Um, again, this is a reminder to just be careful of how I'm treating people when I'm feeling apathetic. <laughs> um, it's a good reminder. It's a good reminder. Sometimes when you're struggling with health stuff, it makes you a little bit cranky. Um, <laughs> and, you know, you're not as careful as you should be, maybe. So I just think it's an important reminder to have. Um, I have another little vellum page. Again, as a separator, but there's nothing on it this time. Um, I just like to have them as little separators. I wouldn't really call it a divider because it doesn't have the marker on top or on the side. It's just a page. Um, I'm trying to use these little bookmarks as dividers instead. Um, so when I'm trying to find certain groups of pages, I can identify them by these. Um, I made these myself just by putting beads on top of paper clips. <laughs> um, there's a video where I show it, I can't remember which one, but I did it, it's super easy. It's a very, very low level craft, um, but they're really effective, so big fan. Um, I might order some actual dividers, but then it's that thing of like my pages are not the size they should be, so I'm not sure it'll work, but there we go. Okay. These pages now are my commonplace book and like my journal combined. Um, you're not meant to combine them traditionally, that's not what it is, it would be separate but you know 21st century so <laughs> move on. Um, my commonplace book is probably one of my most important practices, maybe more so than planning. Planning is good for managing my time. My commonplace, the impact it has on my health and well-being <laughs> is like unparalleled. 
I know that sounds dramatic, but that's how I feel. <laughs> um, this is a place where I collect like my thoughts about everything, the stuff that's bothering me, but it's also where I collect the stuff I'm interacting with, the media I'm engaging with, the things I'm learning or interested in. At the moment, I have well, some articles and stuff about like sleep, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, so it's just a space for me to think and breathe and let ideas breathe and sort of develop I don't know, process things. <laughs> um, none of that was a sentence, but you can pretend it was. Um, this one was a page about moving into the personal size and I put some of my own digital stickers here. Um, if you're not going to use your own work, then I don't know what the point is. <laughs> um, so these are those. Um, the Halloween tree where I read Bradbury from 1972, that's the 1972 edition. Just thought it was cool. Um, here I was writing about some personal stuff. Um, these index dots, do I have the reference? I talk about this every time and we can reference my Hobonichi cousin. Um, but the index dots are an index tagging system. It's how I organise categories of pages or how I easily identify the topic when I'm flipping. Um, so the purple one is for miscellaneous personal stuff. Um, I normally refer to this as brain drain as regular viewers will know brain drain is just me talking about stuff to get it off my mind <laughs> so anything like personal journal stuff that kind of stuff is the purple and then grey is for commonplace so that's text that is not my own this is an article about narcolepsy by a woman or yeah someone called Sarah Fielding I found it online um just thought it was interesting um I have blue for work notes I don't think there's any in here yet I have this pinky purple one for autistic Sherlock Holmes just one of my special interests, so there's a special interest notes. I do have some of those in here. Um, here we go, a purpley pink one, and then a pink pink one for special interest notes that are not Sherlock Holmes, um, and other autistic references, because I'm autistic. So that's how I do it, it's like it's just a tagging system to be able to find topics. Um, I do try to keep things like relatively grouped up, but at the moment my personal book is chronological, um, and I kind of like it that way, so I might not group them up, it really depends. But the best thing about Filofax now is having the option. <laughs> um, so if I decide in two months time when all these papers are still here that I want to group things up better, I can just do that and it doesn't matter, like it's so cool, I'm really happy about that. I really loved my Hobonichi cousin, but after this month ended and I had all these pages, I kind of wanted to be able to take them away and start fresh. Um, I don't know, I started to feel kind of, I don't know, like I loved it, but it's nice to be able to take things in and out when I need them now. I think it's such a game changer for me personally. It was like a real growing moment. <laughs> um, so this one is a typed article. I make all of these pages in Procreate, so the layouts, the grids, the typing, everything in Procreate. I'm not very technically sound, so Procreate is the only program I know how to use. Um, I add the text that for the article on one side and then my margin is where I collect like notes or where I make more notes, um, the source as well usually, um, and then just anything I'm thinking about. I think I had more technical notes in the sides of this one, um, so it's a fun way to work. <laughs> I do like as well that when you type out an article you can highlight it in advance, like you can digitally highlight it and underline it, and then when you print it out it's all done. Um, I think it's kind of cool. And then you don't have to worry about smudging, <laughs> like, it's just, it's kind of a game changer. I used to always write articles out by hand, and I'm still a big believer in that. All of these margins are written out articles, so I do still do it. I think writing things out versus typing is a choice you have to make, because when you write things out by hand, you, I think it's more deliberate, you remember more, you take more of the words in when you're writing them out, because it's the act of the repetition and stuff and the understanding. Whereas typing is just copying and pasting the article, I do format it and then that's why I think it's nice to be able to go back through and highlight it before I print because I type, I, pay, I copy and paste the whole article out and then I go back and I read each page and then highlight things that are of note or importance so that when I print it I can then elaborate on that highlighting or on those sections of text. Um, I wouldn't ever really want to just be copying and pasting it and printing it without, I think, going back over it. Like, uh, that would feel so... kind of defeats the point of a common Facebook, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, otherwise, you might as well just have a folder of bookmarks, you know? So, um, 
some quotes on this one. Um, these are all quotes about sleeping <laughs> um, and about feeling sort of in between and unreal. Um, just all the stuff I'm struggling with at the moment. I don't really want to talk about it, <laughs> um, but I'm collecting some quotes. I have all of the sources for the quotes along here. They're numbered according to the boxes. Um, again, it's just a really nice way to be able to collect things. And then my final tarot card so far is the Four of Swords. <laughs> um, it is a card that represents rest and stuff. Uh, other stuff too, but I'll just say rest. Um, that's what I have it as a reminder for. I put these stickers on top of it. I wouldn't normally do that, but my printer put the most aggressive line <laughs> through this section of the paper. Um, there's another one up here, but I don't know if you can see it, but this one was aggressive and I was like, I can't be living with that. <laughs> so I put the word rest over the top. Um, I think it looks kind of cool though. So there's that. Um, under that I have some more personal pages. Here I was kind of testing out my like collage picture style that I've sort of developed in my A5 Filofax and in my Hobbyichi Cousin. Um, I've been sort of layering things up more than I had done previously. Um, it doesn't really work <laughs> in such a small space but I mean, that's not a deal breaker for me, I don't think it's the end of the world. If anything, it makes it slightly easier to fill pages. It's less of a chore if I don't have to sit and do a whole collage beforehand. Um, but it's still a nice way to work. I like layering things up. Um, so, uh, clipping things on too, big fan. <laughs> um, this one is not Sherlock Holmes, but I always think it looks like him. So I always put him on Sherlock pages. Um, this one is a painting of Piccadilly Circus, which makes me feel homesick. Um, again, here I did a little bit of like layering and I think it does look okay. So I think it is something that I can develop over time that, that I can adapt from my bigger books into my smaller one. Um, my own sketchbook pages, I printed them a lot smaller this time, obviously, but I think they, they work okay small. Um, blank page at the moment, another little, another little picture, another little picture, some writing. Um, and that's how I'm using it. Again, I'm only a weekend, so there's not a lot to see. Um, I'm running out, I need to print some more commonplace pages, <laughs> um, but that's how I use my commonplace book. I think most of you watching will be familiar and you'll already know what the rest of it will look like when I get there, so um, another divider. And then <laughs> this is my new pages that no one has seen yet, but I'm testing, tracking the albums I'm listening to. Um, I really like CDs, but I also collect cassettes and vinyls, <laughs> um, so I created these pages to document the albums that I'm like spending a lot of time with this year. So I have like six or so pages so far of albums that I listen to like the whole album on loop. Um, the first one, Rush by Maneskin. Um, I haven't finished filling out the information yet, but I'm writing down like the ready state, the genre, <laughs> the rating, and then like the date I'm listening, um, and then whether I own it on vinyl, CD, cassette, or Spotify. And um, <laughs> with this one, I own all of them. I have like the whole family um and then a little note and then the track list and then what i'm gonna do is use those same dot markers to, i think to mark my favorite songs i think that could be fun um so this is like <laughs> definitely not necessary it's just a goofy time i'm having fun with i really really like music it's a big part of my life is just listening to music every day constantly um it's a big part of <laughs> mental health management in my opinion so I wanted a way to collect these and I think I cracked it. <laughs> um, so far I'm making all of the album art black and white and just because it's a lot to print them all in colour so I'm taking Clash. Um, but I don't know, I might reprint them in colour, I'm not sure. But again, at least now I have the option, like I can take things in and out when I want to. So kind of cool. I haven't filled out all of the information yet, I'm behind, I haven't, haven't done it, but I have prepped the pages. So that's cool. Um, I have a few, a few pages. Yep. Uh, my reading log, I had these filled out in my A5, but not yet in my personal. Um, it works the same as this page, they're uh, adapted from each other. Um, what I normally do for these ones is I print the book cover and I stick it on this side, and then I write my notes and my review on this side, um, which works well. And then I also made the same page for film and TV reviews which is cool. I want to add something I watched actually like yesterday, so I'm going to do that today. Um, and I'm going to make one for recipes and stuff. Um, these pages aren't available in my shop yet, the A5 ones are, but these ones are not. I haven't done them yet, I haven't like made them official yet. So, okay, that's it. 
Um, I have this pocket at the back. These are all Filofax pockets. This one has my dot stickers. They're made by Stalogy. Um, and then I have my printouts. <laughs> um, I, I print out whole pages like you can see over here. And then I trim them down and put them in. Sometimes I don't cut them very well. <laughs> um, but it's not the end of the world. I try not to be too perfect about things. Um, I have this business card one, but I'm not using that at the moment. It's just in there for storage, I guess. Um, I have this ruler back here that came with it, but I hate it. <laughs> um, I'm using it just to protect my pages from the metal. Um, but it always gets stuck in that flap and then you can't close the book, which is really annoying. I have to keep fishing it out all the time. <laughs> um, so not ideal, but you know, it does its job, so it's fine. Um, yeah, that's all my pages. That's how I'm using it so far. I didn't think it would take that long, but I do feel like I've been talking for 85 years. <laughs> so I'll quickly show you what it looks like closed. So if I pull everything back together, what I do is I lift the pages and the ruler and then pull it all over so that my pen goes underneath. Um, and you can see my bookmarks and everything and you can see my overhang. As I say, it's actually not that bad. It's really not. It's probably less than a centimetre, but maybe a centimetre when it's at its like absolute worst. Um, maybe when it gets more full, it will be worse. Um, but it's it's really not like a deal breaker. If anything, it really adds to that like big, big the vibe of like the big autistic book of everything, the sort of like mad scientist journal. <laughs> um, so it's not the end of the world. Here is what I mean about my pen being problematic, but it's probably just because my pages are so big. Um, if I roll it out, which I thought I could do, yeah. Like, I don't think it will really stay, and then I think it's going to damage my pages. So maybe with time and with a little training, it might. Um, but that is my only concern, really, is that pen. <laughs> so there we go. Cool. That's how I do it. Okay. Um, if you're if you're not interested in um, why I changed to this size, then you're good. You can go if you like. <laughs> um, that's how I'm using it. It's really fun. This is a system that I've worked out over a number of years. These are the things that I need: the weekly pages with my to-do lists, my commonplace book, and then just a place to collect stuff. Um, this has been a really fun experiment, <laughs> as I keep calling it, because I've been developing so much of this stuff for so long. And it's just nice to pull it all together now in a way that is really customizable and personal and I can move things around and archive them. Oh, I will say, these pages do fit perfectly in the Filofax um, archive binders. Um, I bought one and now I can't remember where I put it. But they fit perfectly. So if you do want to use my size pages, if you want to buy my inserts when they're available eventually, they might not fit in your file of facts, but you can archive them flush, like, neatly. Um, so that's a big perk. I was really excited when I realised that. <laughs> so there we go. Um, okay, I changed size. Literally, it's just the portability again, you guys. Like, I, I love the idea of a big book of everything, but then because I've had so many doctor's appointments and stuff recently, and I was lugging around my giant A5 file of facts with 30mm rings, and like all those pages and it was heavy and it's a bit unwieldy like when you get it out it's like it's big and it's floppy like it's just it's just a lot um i did really really love it i really did but it's the portability and like i don't think there's any point dwelling on it or talking extensively about it that's literally the whole story is that it's just not very portable and because at the moment i'm having to go to a lot of appointments and stuff i'm sort of like <laughs> really feeling the need to carry around my book as like a safety blanket, as like a comforter. Um, when I go out and I have to do all my stuff, my appointments and everything, or when I know that I'm gonna have to take a nap in Starbucks again, I'm like, okay, well, at least I can bring <laughs> my comfort. <laughs> so that's it. That's the whole reason. It's not interesting. It's not very long. That's just the whole reason is that I just, I really needed to be able to carry it again. And this is a perfect size, I'm not gonna lie. When you look at them in the shop and they're silly little skinny pages, I was like, oh, I could never. But now I'm making my own pages and they're literally only like 0.5 centimeters wider. It makes such a difference. It makes such a difference. So there we go. That's how I'm using my Filofax. I'm gonna stick with the personal, I think, because it's just the portability, so. This is the plan now, is to stick this out for the rest of the year. I've committed, I've put the stickers on the page. Um, and I'm really excited to see how I can develop it and how I can fill it up with time and stuff and how 
I guess how it might progress over the years. That might be a bit ambitious, but that's how I feel. <laughs> um, there we go. I hope I wasn't too rusty. I, as I said, I do feel like I've been talking for 85 years, but I hope this made sense. Hope it was enjoyable. Hope it's interesting. I'm going to work on making the final versions of the personal pages over the weekend um, or early next week because I'm out tomorrow. <laughs> Um, but I will try and make them available as soon as possible, so if you're interested in them, let me know in the comments. <laughs> um, or if you have requests for types of pages, like I'm going to make a recipe page in the same style as these ones, and my book ones, um, but if you have other requests for stuff like that, let me know, um, and I'll add them to my list. It's really fun, I love to make pages. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, I hope, hope it was good, hope it's interesting, hope you're not too surprised about the sizing. Um, and I will see you next week.